going to be the first part of a lecture on the map playing attack. And I have a game. Uh, it's a game between Leg versus Fleer from 2001. Relatively unknown players. Um, I believe they're both grandmasters, though. And uh, this is going to, this first game here, we're going to show. Um, so this is the, the main move over order here. It's so we're playing the bishops opening here, and we know from the last video, video series that of course knight f6 is going to be met by d4, and we're going to have ourselves <coughs> a year of gambit. But in this line that we're looking at, black plays knight c6 first, and again if they play knight f6 on this move. We're just gonna follow up with d4, uh, followed by e5, and we're gonna have a, a scotch gambit. Now this move here, bishop c5, uh, we just want to castle. And the main move here is to play knight f6. Um, however, um, there are you will see other possibilities here. You're gonna see d6. Followed by bishop g4. This is another move order you're going to have to know. And um, the main move, knight f6, we just go d4 here. And really, there's three options, but there's only two good options here. Um, the main move here is to simply take with the pawn. Uh, taking with the bishop is also possible. We'll look at that one in the fourth video. And taking with the knight um, is actually pretty bad um, because then it just goes up this pawn here. And, you know, uh, because of the threat to this pawn here, uh, black would have to castle. But now we can follow up with this. And if you look at this position with the engine, it's going to tell you every time that white has a a clear advantage in that line. So taking with the knight is not possible. Again, we're gonna look at bishop takes in the last video, but for now we're gonna focus on the main move here, taking with the pawn, and we go e5. So just sort of like in the Scotch Gambit, we're you know we're mobilizing our e pawn after black takes the d pawn, and the main move here is to counterattack the bishop with d5. <clears throat> and we're going to look at that move in the second and third video. But in this in this uh, video, we're just going to focus on knight g4. Um, and mainly because this, this is a move that you're going to see, I would say, uh, at the lower levels, maybe 50% of the time. Because nobody's going to know d5, and nobody's going to know the theory on this. Knight g4 looks like the most intuitive move, right? Because it's attacking this pawn twice. You're moving your knight out of danger. Um, so knight g4 you will see a lot. And you need to go bishop f4 here. This is my recommendation. Um, and for example, um, black a castle here, but I want to look at uh, a sideline here, um, d6 instead. <coughs> You're just going to take on d6. Bishop takes d6, rookie one check, for example. King f8. Bishop takes on d6, check. Queen takes on d6, and now c3. And now queen c5 um, is one move. Queen e2 here. Bishop d7, c takes d4. This was a correspondence game. Queen d6, queen d2, h5 here. Knight c3, and you can tell white's a little bit better. So instead of queen c5, let's look at d takes c3 instead. We just take with the knight, and if they exchange queens, we're happy. Now we're controlling the d and the e file with our rooks. Knight f5. We go knight b5. We want to hit this c pawn here. So rook c8 defends. Now bishop d5. 
So now we're just threatening to really uh, cripple Black's pawn structure, and we should have we should have a good advantage here. Uh, also, you'll notice that um, there might be some back rank threats as well in this position. So there's nothing to uh, nothing to worry about in those lines. Now. Um, let's go back to castle here. So remember, castling here, this is what you're going to see most of the time. And this uh, is actually how we're going to meet this. We're going to go h3 first because there's only one reasonable square for the knight. You can see uh, because of, you know, bishop f4 is defending this, this strong point in the center. Knight has to go to h6 here. And now we just chop that knight. With bishop takes h6, g takes h6. We ruin the king's haircut. And we double, we give black these double outside pawns. And this open g file might help for a king side attack in the future. So c3 <coughs> is what was played in the game. d5 here. And now bishop d3 was played. But I really want to look at bishop b3 because I think it's a better move. Bishop b3, because we want to keep some pressure on the center. And uh, I mean, bishop d3 does attack on the king side, but we'll, we'll see here. Bishop b3, bishop f5. So let's, let's assume they take here. Well, we take with the knight d4, knight e4. You can see white already has a better position there. Um, we're hitting the, the bishop. We have our... We control these light squares, you know, and still these weaknesses remain. So bishop f5 here takes on, d on d4, bishop b6. And uh, knight c3, bishop e4. Knight takes e4, d takes e4, d5. E takes f3, for example. We take the knight. And let's say they take on g2 here. Important move, uh, queen g4 in between move, not taking immediately. And now after queen g5, just simply taking with the king. And you notice we got out of these, uh, this x-ray with the bishop so that now our f pawn is now mobilized. So that after b takes c6, we can go f4. Queen takes g4, for example, h takes, bishop d4, rook a c1. This was all from another correspondence game. C5, C5 and rook h1. King g7, king f3. And um, I think everyone would prefer white in this position. These two pawns are very weak. Actually, all of black's pawns are weak. And um, it's not really going to be too difficult to uh, convert this. So... Uh, we'll look at bishop d3. This move is actually inferior. And black does have a slight advantage here. And But we're going to look at the rest of the game uh, just because, uh, you know, just to see some different ideas here. Bishop, or, er, you know, takes on c3 here. Knight takes c3. Bishop e6 was played. Now knight e2. So the knight is rerouting to f4 here. And trying to go after this bishop bishop b7 here knight f4 bishop g5 okay now queen a4 and d4 was played actually if black played something like bishop d7 here um black actually has a good advantage going uh you know now whenever this knight move you know this is actually coming with a threat and you know it's hard for white to hold on here but actually oops actually d4 here is sort of um black is sort of or extending himself and we can see after knight takes e6 f takes e6 and bishop e4 um so now there's a threat to the knight rook b8 here now we're just rook a d1 instead of taking that knight Queen e8, h4 was played. Now bishop e7, queen c4, queen f7, b3, king h8, 
now he takes. So now after B3, I guess maybe White was worried about Black winning the B pawn at some point, but takes on uh, C6 here. Now Knight takes D4. So hitting this pawn, hitting that pawn. Bishop takes H4 here. Now, now just G3, Rook G8, making use of that pin. Queen takes E6. Queen H5. Queen F5. Rook G5 was played. Queen F3. Takes on E5. Queen takes H5 and Rook takes H5. Now in this position, you can see uh, pretty much all of Black's pieces and pawns are just discombobulated. Um, he's got these double pawns here. He's got double pawns here. He's got this weak pawn over here his rooks are just not connected and you know not helping each other and his just his pieces are very uncoordinated here knight takes c6 was played i'll show the rest of the game quickly uh just so you can see what happened here and yeah and black resigned in this position mainly because you know this threat is is pretty hard to deal with if if black ever takes here it's it's not the end of the world and he's going to lose this pawn rook ending but i want to i want to recap <coughs> because you know the interesting the interesting moment of the game was when this bishop could have moved to b3 or d3 remember the bishop is better on b3 in this line and uh you know bishop f5 we can see why and remember instead of bishop f5 here they take here always take with this knight if we get this knight into play uh, we get our rooks connected here and when you know they ever try to play e4 here the knight simply or when they play d4 we go to e4 with the knight um, but this sideline i wanted to show uh, shows why white has an advantage here because he can take with the king in this line and um, and play f4 and once this happens the queen trade is uh, is of no consequence because this this ending is just winning based on the weaknesses of all black's pawns um, this is definitely better so that that's mainly what I wanted to show with this one and the next two games we're going to show the main line where um, white plays d or black plays d5 and so thank you guys